Hey guys, this is Fred from Pretty Fly Games, and today we're gonna continue with our Car AI built in Unity. Today we're gonna focus on improving the waypoint system that we built earlier. There is a specific case which the current solution does not handle that well, so we will look into the problem at first and then we'll go through the solution. So with our current solution the car is driving along and it's aiming towards the next waypoint, which works fairly well in most cases. But there is a few cases when the distance between the waypoints are getting fairly long and the car is maybe drifting outside the course. In this case the car will just aim towards the next waypoint, but maybe there is a penalty on driving on this gravel and we really want it to follow the path. Also, it could be that there is an obstacle outside of the course, which we don't want the car to hit. So, what we'll do is we will look at implementing a solution where the car finds the nearest point to the line. The line between these two waypoints and also uses the direction towards the next waypoint to find an optimal solution to get back into the path fairly quickly. So this is the problem that we will look into and how to best solve in Unity. In Unity I've set up an example course where you can see this problem. As the car is exiting the curve, it will take a very long time until it reaches back into the course again. So if we have a course where we have a penalty of driving on gravel, it means that the AI will drive very slowly. Uh, of course there is a solution where you could add multiple waypoints along the line here, which will also solve the problem. But it's tedious to add a lot of waypoints to your courses and over time it might create other problems. So let's look into how we can improve this in the AI, AI code instead. We will open up Visual Studio with the car AI handler again and go through how to add it in code. In our car AI handler, we wanted to be able to follow a line. And to form a line, we will have to use the current waypoint, which is something we already know. But we will also need to add the previous waypoint so that we can connect it as a line. And uh, this previous waypoint is just the old current waypoint. So we go down into a script where we have the follow the waypoints. And first, uh, if uh, we don't even have a current waypoint, then of course we will find the current waypoint. And at the same time, we will assign uh, the previous waypoint as the current waypoint. And then as well, when we are updating the current waypoint, we want to store the value before we do this. So we want to store it uh, before we set a new current waypoint. So we store it like this. Then we will add a new function that helps us find a point on a line and we will add it here. All right, so uh, it uh, takes in a start position of the line an end position and a point where we are at. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is uh, get a vector, so the heading of the line. And how we do that is we take the end point minus the start point. That will give us the vector of the line. And we also want to figure out what the maximum distance is. So how long is the the whole uh, vector and we will store this as the max distance then we will normalize uh, our heading so it becomes uh, between 0 and 1 and that is a normal direction vector uh, after that we will want to do a projection from uh, our start position to the point uh, and here it becomes a little bit tricky, so I won't go into, into specific details of it. Uh, but we will use a dot product between the, the, the start point to the line heading vector. And that returns our dot product of this. Uh, now, this value is something that we don't want it to be too long. So we will clamp it down to the max distance. That will ensure that it never goes further than the actual line. 
uh, and then we will return our position because now we can compute that which we get from line start position plus the heading of the vector times the dot product uh, so this will create the ability for us to uh, find the nearest point on uh, a line now let's uh, use this function in our follow waypoints function and we'll add it just after our distance to waypoint uh, we provide the previous waypoint and the current waypoint as parameters which creates a line and the car's position will be the point now the return value of this is where we want the car to drive so we just set the target position to the return value of this then we will add a debug draw line so we can see in unity what happens so let's try that in Unity and see what happens. So the car is swaying back and forth, which is not the intended behavior, uh, but it's actually doing exactly what we told it to. Uh, it is finding the closest uh, point on the line. If we pause here, we can see that the function is working. It is uh, taking a, a direction from the car and uh, finding a uh, exactly the point on the line so uh, the code is working exactly as it should uh, but what we need to do is we need to blend in the other vector that we talked about before so we want to use the the final waypoint and make a line and take a destination somewhere in between so let's add that in our visual studio code so first of all we're going to change this uh, so it only runs if the distance to the waypoint is larger than 20 and the reason for this is uh, that it can cause some problems uh, with the, the AI and when it's overtaking other cars. Now we want to blend in the nearest point and mix it with the current waypoint that we are going towards. Uh, so we do this by adding a segment uh, and we're dividing the distance to the points by 20 so each segment will be of the length of 20 then we take the target position and we add the nearest point to the waypoint line times the segments and we divide it by segments plus one this means that uh, the target position will be closer to the point on the line, but it will be a blend between the current waypoint and the point on the line. So let's try this in Unity and see how it behaves now. So we see that the car is following the line as expected and as it's turning, it uh, is uh, also finding the closest uh, point on the line and are, is driving along the line between the waypoints. So this is exactly the behavior we wanted it to have and we can change this distance of 20 to something shorter or longer depending on the game you're, uh, you have. Uh, we have also received some questions from our viewers how we've implemented the difficulty levels in uh, Total Arcade Racing. So we experimented with several solutions and uh, in the end uh, we found that making the AI too stupid uh, is just frustrating for the player because it will just uh, crash into walls and behave just strangely. So what we did was we changed two parameters of how the AI behaves. The first parameter is how fast the AI will be able to drive. So on, on higher uh, skill levels they drive very fast and on slower skill levels they drive more slowly. The other factor is um, how quickly they react to uh, when they are braking when it comes to cornering. So new players in Total Arcade Racing usually hits the gas and just passes through uh, every corner at top speed. Uh, so we uh, implemented this behavior in the AI so it, it will not slow down as much when it's cornering causing it to oversteer slightly and have um, well, issues that, that you have when you have a slightly lower skill level in total arcade racing.
So let's look into how we can implement uh, this in our AI code. So first we add a new variable and uh, we'll call it skill level and it will be a float with a range of zero and one. So it will be between zero and 100%. So in our old code, we actually had a little bug. Uh, the max speed of the car was changed every time you dro drove past a waypoint. And uh, it could actually be faster than we wanted it to be. So we will store a new variable called original maximum speed. Which we will set in the awake function. We will then add a new function and we will put it below the uh, apply throttle or brake function. Uh, just let me find it. And uh, here we go. And we will call it set max speed based on skill level. And it takes in a float called uh, the new speed. And uh, it clamps the new speed between zero and the original maximum speed. So uh, it can never go above the maximum speed that we intended for it. And after that, uh, we will add uh, a skill based maximum speed, which will be clamped between 0 0.3 and 1.0. So we don't want the car ever to stop. So the slowest possible speed will be 30%. And then we use this when calculating the maximum speed. So we take our maximum speed and uh, we uh, multiply it with the skill based maximum speed. So uh, a speed with 100% skill level will drive at the maximum speed. Then we take this function and we use it in our start uh, function where we set it to the maximum speed of the car and then we will also use it uh, when we are passing a, a waypoint and uh, here is uh, the area where we had the bug before uh, we uh, take the uh, current waypoint and we set it to the maximum speed and if uh, it's uh, zero, then we set it to 1000, which is uh, a lot bigger than the value that we actually want it to be. Uh, so we use this new function and we provide it, we can still use the value 1000. And uh, then uh, if we take the value from the waypoint, then uh, we change the max speed by setting this function and we use the current waypoints uh, maximum speed. Then the second part we wanted to add was the reduction of speed due to cornering. Uh, so let's go into our function that handles that and that's the apply throttle or brake. We will then create a new variable and uh, we will call it uh, reduce speed due to cornering and it will be the same value as the function returned before. Uh, now I see uh, we have a slight spelling mistake in the reduce seed due to cornering. That should be reduce speed due to cornering. So we take our variable reduce speed due to cornering and we uh, use it uh, in this return function and we multiply it with the skill level. Uh, so a car with a high skill level will uh, reduce uh, its speed due to cornering and a car with a low skill level will not uh, be reducing speed at all. All right, so uh, let's try all of this in Unity and see how it behaves. So in Unity I set up uh, a simple scene where the cars have different skill levels and as we can see they're also using the new code to uh, finding the way back to the line as fast as possible. And now we have a much more improved waypoint handler with cars that uh, are driving uh, based on their skill level and also are following the waypoint lines. 
so i hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, please if you have future topics that you want us to cover please just write it in the comments or join our discord channel and uh, don't forget to give uh, this uh, video a thumbs up if you like it and also hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos from uh, me and uh, also the bell if you want to get a notification when a new video is out Here's an example from our game, Total Arcade Racing, which uses this component. You can find the game on Steam or Nintendo Switch. Please take it for a spin if you want to.